uh, I think the essence of uh, the scientific method is the willingness to, uh, to admit you're wrong, the willingness to abandon uh, ideas that don't work, uh, and the essence of uh, religion is not to change uh, anything. The supposed truths are handed down by uh, some revered figure, and then no one is supposed to make any, uh, any progress beyond that because all the truth is thought to be in hand. So much of what we see and hear in our media is negative. Sometimes it seems as if the world is falling apart around us, especially if you spend a lot of time on YouTube where sensationalism is king. However, we are actually surrounded by a lot of progress as well. Today I wanted to celebrate some of the incredible achievements that so often get overlooked, and the people who contributed to those achievements. Today I wanted to share with you five scientific discoveries that have saved millions of lives. Let's get started, shall we? Fritz Haber and Carl Bosch invented a way to transform the nitrogen in the air into fertilizer, which saved millions of lives. In fact, it has been argued that half of the world's population wouldn't be alive today if the process hadn't been discovered. In 1918, the chemist Fritz Haber received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for his method, which made the manufacture of ammonia economically feasible. Carl Bosch then developed a method of replicating the process on an industrial scale, which earned him a Nobel Prize in 1931. Basically, when plants grow and then die, the nitrogen that they contain returns to the soil. But humans disrupt this process by eating the plants, which in turn leaves the soil depleted of nitrogen. The Haber-Bosch process found a way to circumvent the problem, and in the process made it possible to feed millions of people that otherwise couldn't have been fed. Edward Jenner is often called the father of immunology because he invented a vaccine that could provide immunity to smallpox. It's estimated that 300 million people have died from smallpox in the 20th century alone. And this insidious disease, which kills a third of anyone who is infected, has been with humanity for thousands of years. Jenner had observed that milkmaids who contracted the much milder disease of cowpox never contracted smallpox. In 1796, Jenner inserted pus from a cowpox pustule into the incision of a then 8-year-old James Phipps, he later submitted his findings to the Royal Society, but was told that his ideas were too revolutionary. Jenner was ridiculed by many, especially the clergy who claimed it was ungodly to inoculate someone using material from another diseased animal. However, Jenner's discovery worked, and in 1979, thanks in large parts to Jenner's discovery, the World Health Organization officially declared smallpox to be eradicated. Sir Alexander Fleming was born on August 6th, we share a birthday, in 1881. In 1928, he discovered penicillin, and he received the Nobel Prize for his discovery in 1945. It's impossible to say how many lives penicillin has been able to save, but it's been estimated to be anywhere between 80 million and 200 million. Penicillin has been used to treat many different ailments, some of which are fatal, such as pneumonia, syphilis, and gonorrhea. Richard Lewison is not as well known as some of the other scientists mentioned in this list, but his discovery is estimated to have saved over a billion lives and counting. Richard discovered a process that helped preserve blood outside of the body, which has led to the development of blood banks. Quote, Through experiments with transfusing dogs, he determined the maximum levels of sodium citrate that could be administered without being toxic. This allowed him to determine the exact concentration of sodium citrate that was both safe and effective for blood transfusions. This was the breakthrough the world needed. The same year, others showed that blood treated with Lewison's citrate method would keep for two days prior to transfusion. The following year, 1916, others pushed that time frame to 14 days. Lewison's discovery of the ability to store blood outside the body prior to transfusions was remarkable, credited with saving over 1 billion lives thus far. Norman Ernest Borla is known as the father of the Green Revolution. He was an American agricultural scientist, plant pathologist, and winner of the Nobel Prize in 1970. He died in September of 2009. Quote, seeking to assist impoverished farmers who struggled with diseased and low-producing crops, Borla experimented with novel varieties of wheat, creating disease-resistant strains that could withstand the harsh climate. That work was founded on earlier discoveries of ways to induce genetic mutations in plants, and his methods led to modern plant breeding. 
The Green Revolution resulted in increased production of food grains, especially wheat and rice, and was in large part due to the introduction in developing countries of new, high-yielding varieties, beginning in the mid-20th century, with Borla's work. At a research station at Campo Adzapan, he developed a short-stemmed dwarf strain of wheat that dramatically increased crop yields. Previously, taller wheat varieties would break under the weight of the heads if production was increased by chemical fertilizers. Borla's short-stemmed wheat could withstand the increased weight of fertilized heads and was a key element in the green revolution in developing countries. Wheat production in Mexico multiplied threefold, owing to this and other varieties. End quote. It's estimated that Norman's discoveries have saved over 200 million lives. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video inspiring, and please feel free to leave your favorite scientists and their discoveries in the comment section below. I'd love to read them. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and cheers.